I got an early 50s Raytheon console TV. Here we just give this thing a, a quick little check out. A little tall for my camera, but it's on wheels at least. This is not one thing I got at the Kutztown Radio Show. The price was right. It's got a AM phono and TV. It has a continuous tuner, which doesn't seem to be stuck. This is the veneer driver slipping, but the outside ring seems to turn pretty well. I'm not sure if this is the what kind this is, whether it's the Mallory one that has the ceramic shaft that breaks, or if it's a different kind. It's a little stiff there. It's probably switching over because if you so it has the AM the AM on the top here. Fifty-five to sixteen and the T V channels on the front. I'm not sure how exactly this works though, because if you look the AM is continuous fifty-five Continuous up to 16 and it bottoms out there. The TV is not. So right now I guess that'd be channel 2, right? If I keep turning, I hit channel 6, then I go to channel 13, and I start going backwards down to channel 7. So I'm not quite sure how that works, why they split it up that way. And what's in between 6 and 13, unless that's where the FM band is, if this has the ability to receive FM. So FM is in between channels 6 and 7. It's not that bad, it's not that hard to add an FM. When you have a con continuous tuner like this, it's not that hard to add FM because um, TV sound is already um, FM decoded. So it's just... Uh, just the matter of adding the reception in between channel 6 and 7 and you've already got an FM radio there. It's just the same sound decoding. Raytheon, we have some controls under the Raytheon plaque here. Can get them up up on the inside there. They have labels, I think. I'm not sure if you can read. Oh, there we go. Brightness. Say tone. Vertical hold. Can't recall ever seeing a tone control on a TV before, but then again, I haven't done much console TVs. I'll pull out the phonograph here. It's not stuck at least. The felt seems to be in decent condition. The changer arm. You can see, but it looks like there is a needle on there. It's not focusing. Is that it doesn't lock in, just sits there. Seems a bit gummy, but it's a bit stiff, but not terrible. Like it's rubbing on something, maybe. Have to check that out then. Turn it around. We've got a. Looks like you can adjust the antenna direction. Got our centering stick. There's our. Model number, I guess. We got model number right there. 275 watts. Got some more controls on the back. We have our antenna. Vertical linearity and size. Looks like these are just slide the spring across for horizontal size and linearity. Our phono wire is broken off there. I'll have to stick that back on. Sorry, right, that's just the just the RCA plug came off the end. It's a nice long end on that RCA plug. Phono input. I'm not sure what that is. Phono on that too. Horizontal hold. Is that tag there, I say? 
something moto. Let's get this back off. Got these wires, unless that's the phono power to the phonograph. Maybe that's what that's for. Do we have some wires down here? Yeah, that must be what that is. That must be power to the phonograph. Plugs in there. But we'll worry about that later. Our cord's been cut. Also got, that must be the speaker wires there. As the speaker pulls out with the drawer. Not quite sure why it's disconnected. And that's just the phono drawer down there with the wires. So let's get the back off of this. So like we can just loosen up the screws here. I've not been inside here yet. Well, let me set this down for a minute. So I can unplug the Cheeto cord. Oh, there's a lock on it or something. Does that help? No. It's a knob though. I assume there was a lock in there. Alright, I'm gonna play with that for a minute. You know, it helps when you read the directions. Remove screw under AC input. So I guess this screws out. This little knob here. Doesn't seem like it's screwing out, does it? Oh, now it seems a bit looser. Not quite yet, though. comes off. Alright, let's see what we've got in here. Got our power transformer there. That must be the rectifier tube. Two transformers there. Possibly vertical and audio, maybe? Got a high voltage cage. That big one there must be the horizontal output. That goes right into the cage there. I don't see what that is. Got some filter capacitors. So, COT. Raytheon, of course. It's a Raytheon TV. Focus. Paper in here. Let's take a look at that. Actually, before we do that, let's finish going all the way. We got our tuner up there in the front. It's like most of the octal in this one. Oh, there's some miniature tubes up there too. Got a tube chart on the side there. Oh. Tube chart on the side. Let's see what this. Come on. So that looks like it's not, not actually doing anything. It's supposed to be connected to a capacitor. It's almost what it looks like. Hard to tell. Almost looks like a little trimmer capacitor up in there. I can't really get in to see it with the camera. It looks like a trimmer capacitor, though I'm not seeing how that that knob is connected to it. But anyway, got a loop antenna on the side there for AM. 
if I showed up there, we got our high voltage lead. And that's kind of about it for the inside. So a little, there's a couple more transformers up there too. That's interesting. There's a full view of the inside there. Should we see if we can open the high voltage cage? wire on here. There we, just, there we go. So, fly back down in there and the high voltage rectifier. Kind of dark. It's like a pretty small flyback. I have to, I'm not going to pull this out of the cabinet today. I just want to get a little overview of what it, look, what it looks like inside. Make sure nothing obvious is missing. I don't see anything obvious missing. Our ion trap magnet here on the CRT. This will be the, by the centering assembly here. Yeah, it's got our centering stick on it. So I just moved this back and forth, left and right to, to center the picture on the screen. Got our fuse on the other side of the rectifier there. All right. Of course, that tag says phono moto. She figured out. So cheeto quarter plug in. So yeah, that just screws in there. Hold the back on. Tube serial. Tenna connection. Let's get these papers out and see what's on them. The speaker wires come apart again. Oh, that's not important. We'll worry about that later. All right. Hey, service information. It's always useful. Raytheon, 1952. Chassis and models. And the tube layout. That way. That's the front. This is the front front down here, the back over here. I'm not sure how you want to look at that. But, yeah, this is the front, that's the back. Right, IF alignment, or IF alignment. And schematic. Good, that should be useful in repairing this. Did I say what picture tube it uses? I don't see it on there. What does it say on here? I have to check and see if it says on the tube. So I'm not seeing it on here. Anywhere. Yep. Alright, so overall, looks pretty good for free TV. Of course I have no idea if the CRT is any good or not. Not gonna worry about that. We're just gonna go ahead and work on this. Um, even if the CRT is bad, I might still get a good phono and um, AM and potentially FM radio out of this. 
I'm not sure if it'll pick up the FM band or not. That odd tuner arrangement. Let me look around the CRT, see if I can find the number on it. I can't seem to find the CRT number anywhere. Um, I also noticed that the back of this TV says model RC says 1720B, so I'm assuming that's a 17 inch set, but the paperwork here seems to be all 20 inch sets. 20 inch sets. So you have C2001A, C2002A, C OC2005A and C2006A. And some more of them. Oops, I'm not even showing it, of course. Um, now I'm just looking at the schematic. They look, or looking at the tube layout, everything here looks pretty similar. Um, um, we won't know for sure until we get further into this, but I wish there was someone. I can't imagine someone would have sucked this in here if it wasn't at least somewhat useful to them in working on this at one point, but we'll see. Uh, the CRT base is also a little bit loose, so I'll we'll have to be wary of that as we go forward. Uh, hopefully once we get this out of here, we'll be able to hopefully determine what CRT it uses. Not that it makes any difference, because I'm sure we'll be able to find a spare anyway, but still. So that's just a, a quick overview here. Um, I'm not sure if the CRT is going to be any good. Um, a lot of these console sets with the radio and the phono, even when you're not using the CRT, the TV, like when you're just listening to the radio or listening to a record, they still keep the CRT filament on, which kind of burns out the tube pretty quick. Just, you know, we just spend a couple hours a day listening to the radio or longer, whatever, over the years, you burn out the CRT. But regardless, I'm going to go ahead with this, you know, even if the CRT is bad, hopefully I'll also get a working radio or phone or something out of this. You know, for, for free, whatever I get is bonus, so. I think that's going to be it uh, for now. I just wanted to do a little quick look at this. Everything looks to be pretty complete, so I don't see any reason why we can't get into this further. Actually, right here it says the chassis number and, oh, and the model number. So, yeah, I'm counting on that being a 17-inch tube in here. Just not sure the exact number. But, anyway, hope you enjoyed this little look at this. Um, early 50s, and this is 52 on the paperwork. Raytheon console TV. Uh, we're going to definitely get into this at a later date. Uh, see if we can get this thing working. But, that's all for now. So, hope you enjoyed this video. And thank you for watching.